How's it going everyone? It's Ryan here with Green Tech Network. Today I want to review Samsung's new Galaxy S9 Plus. Uh, now this is Samsung's new flagship phone uh, that just came out about a couple weeks ago. Um, I myself purchased it um, in the Midnight Black Edition uh, about seven days ago, so I've had a decent amount of time uh, to you know, work with it and uh, familiarize myself and kind of determine some of its strengths and weaknesses. Um, you know, that way I can give you all a proper review. So the way this review is going to work, um, I've kind of broken up the um, individual phone components uh, into different sections that I want to talk about uh, individually. Um, so that's things like you know the buying process, uh, the performance, the battery, uh, the connectivity, the display, the camera, and then you know some of those random features that don't really fit in any of the other groups. So I'm going to go through those you know one by one, um, and then at the end I'm going to wrap it up kind of with a final conclusion and my overall verdict on uh, Samsung's new Galaxy S9 Plus. So starting off the buying process, I purchased this phone direct from Samsung Unlocked and was able to take advantage of their trade-in program to receive $200 off my order with the trade-in of my old Galaxy S7. In addition, I also opted for the Samsung Ultimate Bundle, um, which at the time was a limited edition bundle. I'm not sure if it'd still be available at the time that this video is released. Um, however, it came with Samsung's fast wireless charger, the 2018 model Gear Icon X headphones, and also the 2018 model of the Gear VR headset, all for around $100. This bundle was valued at around $400 new, so I figured, you know, why not get some extra accessories for my phone? I'll be uploading reviews for all these add-ons as well in the future, um, but in total I ended up paying around $740 for the phone and the bundle after the $200 trade-in credit. In terms of performance, this phone is just as fast as you would expect any flagship phone to be. Internally it has Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 CPU along with the Adreno 630 GPU and a total of 6 gigabytes of RAM. Now coming from the Galaxy S7, I you know, started to become a little bit used to the system hangs and slightly laggy performance that you come to expect after having you know, a two-year-old flagship phone. However, using the S9 Plus, I mean, it's completely night and day in terms of uh, how quickly it is to respond and also its ability to multitask. On the S7, I found myself constantly you know, closing out older apps and processes, but on the S9, I honestly haven't even done it once in you know, the week that I've had it. Uh, and it's because it can handle a ton of apps open at once with little to no noticeable hiccups at all. Now, compared to the S9, the S9 Plus and the S9 both use the same processor. However, the S9 Plus comes with an additional two gigabytes of RAM over the S9. And now, to be honest, I haven't used the S9 to see if this makes a huge difference. Um, I'm assuming, you know, currently it, it probably doesn't, to be honest. Um, but, you know, as the future progresses and apps start to use more and more RAM, um, you might have a little bit more future proofing with the S9 Plus because you'll have those additional two gigabytes of RAM over the standard S9. Moving on to the display, as you'd expect from any Samsung phone, the display on the S9 Plus looks incredible. This time, Samsung opted for a 6.2 inch Super AMOLED screen, which comes in at 1440 by 2960 pixels. This has a pixel per inch density of 529, which interestingly enough is actually a little bit lower density than my old Samsung Galaxy S7. And this is you know, due to the fact that the S9 Plus has such a large screen, has a little bit lower pixel density. But you know, nonetheless, the phone still looks super crisp, super clear, not, definitely not noticeable between the S9 Plus and the S7. So with the S9 Plus, you're looking at an 84.2% screen to body ratio. And that means when you look at the phone, you're pretty much looking entirely at the screen. Um, but you know, that does have some drawbacks. With the S9 Plus, there's no longer a physical home button because they opted to make the screen so large. Uh, this means you now have kind of a small virtual bar at the bottom uh, that has the uh, button that lets you switch between apps, the home button, and also the back button. Samsung also implemented a little uh, button in the bottom left that you can double tap, and this will actually minimize that, that virtual bar for full screen usage within certain apps. Um, and, and they've even done a pretty good job at automatically recognizing when to minimize this bar once video playback starts. So, you know, if you're in Netflix, Hulu, um, Amazon Prime Video, or even Spotify watching a music video, it'll automatically minimize that bar for you. And then to bring the bar back if you need it, you simply swipe up from the charging port area and it displays. In terms of battery life, the S9 Plus has inside it a 3.5 amp hour battery which has an additional 500 milliamp hours over the S9. 
Now, I'm not sure if the battery on my S7 was getting really old or the S9 Plus has better battery optimization, but I feel like I can use this phone nearly twice as long as my old S7. I personally feel like the battery life is pretty good, uh, but I have read a few professional reviews online that have stated the battery life on the S9 Plus and the S9 is about average to slightly below average. So, you know, take my comparison uh, with a grain of salt. But even so, with quick charge, you can top off your phone's battery pretty fast. Interestingly enough, Samsung still hasn't moved on to Quick Charge 3.0. They're still using the old Quick Charge 2.0 standard uh, from a couple years ago. This means that the charger that comes in the box with your phone only charges at 5 volts 2.5 amps or 9 volts 1.7 amps, and not the full 12 volts 1.25 amps that Quick Charge 3 allows for. My theory on this is that Samsung would rather your phone charge a little bit slower and retain more of its battery capacity later on in life the faster and hotter a battery charges, the quicker its capacity degrades. And because of this, I actually use overnight, I'll use a 5 volt 1 amp charger for this reason and really only use quick charge when I need it to power fast. But when you do need it, it will charge pretty fast. On the topic of charging, this phone has a USB-C 3.1 port for charging. And I've noticed an interesting trend of Samsung moving all of their equipment to USB-C from micro USB. And this includes their Gear Icon X headphones, and also the wireless fast charger that I bought from them bundled in with this phone. Uh, this is definitely a plus as you no longer really have to worry about carrying around a USB-C cable and a micro USB, micro USB cable if you've kind of adopted Samsung's additional accessories for the S9 Plus. Moving on to connectivity, this phone has pretty much all of the standard connectivity you'd expect for a brand new flagship phone. It has the standard 802.11 ABG and AC dual band Wi-Fi. This does result in extremely fast downloads as long as you have a router that supports it. On top of that, you know, you get the standard 4G LTE support, NFC and Bluetooth 5.0, which is honestly pretty good in my opinion. You know, you can connect to your speakers and your headphones in a room away and go through the wall with no problems at all. On top of this, we still have that standard headphone jack, which is definitely a plus when you're using your phone with older speakers or you know maybe some older cars that still utilize that standard headphone jack. Interestingly enough, I read online that this phone does come with an FM radio receiver, uh, but it currently has yet to be unlocked. Supposedly, this is coming in a recent update from Samsung. And I still wish Samsung would implement an IR blaster so that you can you know mimic some remotes you have laying around your house, but honestly at this point, that's probably a pipe dream. Now we get to the camera. There's been a lot of hype around the S9 and the S9 Plus's camera due to it being the very first smartphone to implement a physically adjustable aperture. The camera can switch on the fly between f1.5 and f2.4. This means that the camera will actually open its aperture in low light conditions to pull in more of that light, resulting in a much cleaner picture. And then in higher light conditions, the aperture restricts to let in less light as well. I can say that the photos are honestly incredible in comparison to my old Samsung Galaxy S7. I'll go ahead and go through a few of them right now. So starting off, we have this photo of a tree outdoors with the sky as the background. Even with the relatively bright sky in the back, the camera picked up a lot of the detail on the leaves and the flowers. A very high resolution photo here. Here we have just a photo of the shift knob in my car. I wanted to get something a little bit close up and then see how the camera performed, you know, up, up nice and close and then kind of blur out the background a little bit. Turned out pretty well. Here we have just a section of a beer bottle opener on my countertop. I just wanted to get a photo of, you know, some of the blues and some of the browns. You see a little bit of that standard Samsung oversaturation in the blues, but not, not too bad. I think it still looks pretty good. This photo is just a bag of Soylent, not much to it. I was just trying to get a you know, bunch, of, bunch of random photos to throw in here. Here we have some flowers in my apartment. So this photo was taken, taken with uh, the f1.5 forced setting. So with the aperture, you know, restricted a little bit and it was in a relatively dark room, you know, not pitch black, but, but still pretty dark. I had the shades drawn. And this photo is the you know exact same flowers except with the uh, f2.4 aperture, so a little bit brighter, not a huge difference because the room was already you know relatively 
uh, uh, lit up a little bit, but there is, you know, some noticeable more detail in the shadows and, and some of the darker sections of the photo. This is just a photo of a plant in my apartment. I also wanted to try to see how the saturation turned out on this photo with the greens. Um, definitely, those greens definitely pop. Um, in my opinion, it uh, doesn't look too bad. Um, some people may, may think it's a little oversaturated. Another photo where I was trying to get some color. So we have the oranges, the yellows, the greens, and then some, some pinks and other colors down there. Um, and this one looks a little oversaturated in my opinion, especially that yellow, but you know, that's, that's kind of, kind of what we should expect from Samsung at this point. They do like to saturate their photos in the, in the uh, image processing. Now here we get to the live focus feature, and this is where the camera started to fall a little bit behind in my opinion. So uh, the main reason I kind of bought the, the S9 Plus was one, I wanted the RAM, and then two, I wanted the live focus capabilities. But as you can see in this photo, it struggles a little bit in determining the edges of, of what your subject is and, and what the background should be. For example, if you look at my cabinet there along the right, the cabinet is blurred in the upper section and then halfway through live focus decides to, to cease the blur. And I'm not really sure why, you know, perhaps it's because this bottle is see-through and it gets a little confused. Um, and you can also notice a little bit of blurriness around the black edges of the top part of the bottle. So definitely not perfect. I, I was a little disappointed um, with the performance, to be honest, with live focus, but it's it's okay overall, in, in my opinion. Here's another photo, and this one looks a little bit better. However, there still is that issue with the blur along the edge of the counter where it curves, because that's you know just as close as as the beer bottle opener on the table there. However, for some reason, you know, Live Focus <clears throat> decided that they were going to, you know, it was going to blur that little rounded piece of the, of the, of the uh, tabletop there. So like I said, definitely has a little bit of issues to figuring out what's in the foreground and what's in the background. Here we have a photo of uh, me outdoors. Uh, this I wanted to get, you know, at least, at least one human subject in this video. Um, this one turned out actually pretty well. I had the, the, the background blur set to, I think, around two or three, so it goes up to seven, so it wasn't set all the way. Um, you can see a little bit of, of blurriness along my uh, hairline on my part there on, on the, the left part of my head. Um, and I also noticed if you're, if you're taking photos of someone who has, uh, you know, kind of frizzy or curly hair or hair that sticks up a little bit, Life Focus really, really struggles determining um, that it'll, it'll blur out a pretty large portion of their hair. And the same thing also applies to if you're taking uh, an up-close photo of a, uh, so some plants or a tree or of shrubbery with a live focus. Basically any sort of complex shape with a lot of edges and a lot of corners, uh, live focus definitely struggles with. But, you know, even with that said, I do think that the camera overall is very, very good. A huge upgrade for my Galaxy S7. Uh, the camera itself does have a lot of different features, a lot of different shooting modes. I'm not going to run through all of them, um, but overall, I think the camera is good, but Live Focus could definitely use some work in the future. And now, before I wrap it up with the final conclusion, I do want to highlight some of the other, you know, random features that don't really fit into any of the other categories that I talked about earlier. So starting off, this phone does have a micro SD card slot, and personally, this is a must-have for me. It supports up to 400 gigs of additional storage, which is perfect for those with a large movie, show, or music collection. Moving on from expandable storage, one of the other random features I want to talk about is the fingerprint reader. Now I mentioned how this phone has an 84.2% screen to body ratio, and in order to make the screen as large as possible, the fingerprint reader has been moved from the front of the phone, which you know most phones tend to have it on the front, now to the back. Unfortunately, Samsung was not able to implement an in-screen fingerprint reader, uh, but in my opinion, the location of the fingerprint reader is in a pretty natural place, and I really have no, tra no issues transitioning from the physical front-facing reader on my S7 to the now rear-facing reader on the S9 Plus. Uh, with this being said, though, I feel like it is a little bit close to the camera lens, which means as I'm getting used to it you know, myself personally, I feel that I'm constantly smudging the camera lens. I think that you know, with some practice and as I become you know, more familiar with where the fingerprint reader is on the phone, I won't have this issue in the future. 
The fingerprint reader is very accurate, and I've noticed that that's had very little misreads or you know issues unlocking my phone. And it actually even works pretty well if you have water on your hands or your fingers tend to be a little bit damp. And on the topic of water, this brings us to our next random feature of this phone. It is IP68 certified. So the 6 and 68 means that the phone is dust tight, so it has complete protection against internal dust. And the 8 and 68 means that the phone is suitable for continuous immersion in water under the conditions specified by Samsung. And in this case, they're specifying that it can handle up to 1.5 meters of immersion for 30 minutes straight. And this is, you know, a definite plus for people who like to bring uh, their phone to the pool with them, to the beach, or maybe even to the bathroom and not have to worry about the phone getting waterlogged. For those type of people who like to listen to music on their phone speakers, ugh, what's wrong with you? This phone does utilize both the downward facing speaker along the bottom of the phone, as well as the earpiece to work kind of in conjunction to produce stereo sound. Now, I personally don't listen to music that much on my phone speakers. Uh, however, it does result in a lot louder and clearer audio over the S7 when I'm watching, you know, a YouTube video or an Instagram video, or, you know, sometimes even Snapchat which is definitely a plus for people who like to listen to audio through their phone speakers. So wrapping it all up, I can honestly say that I'm a huge fan of the Galaxy S9 Plus. Coming from the older Galaxy S7 to the new S9 Plus, it's been a literal night and day experience in, in terms of performance, camera, battery life, I mean literally everything. It's The S9 Plus is everything you could really expect from a brand new flagship phone. This concludes my review of Samsung's new Galaxy S9 Plus. I'd like to thank you all for watching and feel free to provide your own input on what you think about the phone below. Random features. Um, what the fuck's that noise?